Yes, very good morning, everybody. Welcome to church this good morning. morning. Good, good to morning. be on the pre-service. Hello, George. Hello, Dubs. What's happening? So much. It's your debut. It's my debut. Yeah, she's on the <laughs> pre-service show. Mom and Dad are in road two. This is true. This Somewhere morning there. they're watching. They're very proud of you. Yes. They told me oh, gosh. they're very proud and they love you lots. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, happy Easter. And to you. Have you had a good morning? Yes. Um, yeah, I woke up at six. Here we are. The sun yeah, shining. Woke, woke up at six and here we are. That's, That's exactly it. what happened. <laughs> we woke up at uh, 4.45. You win. And I'm we sorry. A, and we had a hunt. Oh, that's nice. The lighties must hunt. They must work for their eggs, George. We can't just, they can't uh, just get given eggs. The lighties must pay their due. Yeah, exactly right. You, those and eggs they, are expensive now. And they all pay parent tax, eh? <laughs> so they get their eggs, then they come, obviously get taxed by their parents. Oh, that's good. And then it's like, all right, guys, in the shower, let's go. Move, 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 move. And, then, and here we are. Here we are. What a great way to start <laughs> Easter Sunday. Yes. The tomb is empty. He is risen. That's why we have eggs. Uh, Some of them have empty? a small hole in the tomb already. Oh, Check it. gosh. Oh. It's got a little hole in that yeah. tomb there. That's obviously where the oh, stone no. was rolled away. Look at that. So, so colorful. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so colorful. <laughs> hey, but if you just arrived at church this morning, great to have you with us. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Easter Sunday. And uh, if you are new visiting here for the first time, we know you're going to have an amazing morning. If you're from out of town, find a local property agent. There's plenty in the room. Amen. And uh, buy some property. Stick around. Come on. And uh, just a very warm welcome to everyone joining us online this morning as well. Wherever you may be joining us from uh, around the world, we are so stoked to have you join us online yep. this morning for Easter Sunday. And just to say this, you're as much a part of the service online as you are as the people in the house. So uh, I've got a good friend here, Jilly. Jilly's going to come say hi. Her daughter, Lisa Watt, is in the Seychelles, and she wanted to come say hi to Lisa. Come on, Jilly. Uh, thank you, my darling. I just want to wish you a happy, happy Easter, Lee and family. And remember, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. And because he lives, we shall live too. Amen, my darling. Have a great day. Amen, Jilly. Thanks for popping on. I know Lisa too. Lisa, you must listen to your mom. I know your daughter. She's beautiful. There we go. Lisa, a firm favorite. And uh, Lisa, if you're online this morning, why don't you pop a little comment in the box? Just let us know you're there. And uh, I'll say hi to mom for you when, po- when it pops up on the screen. Uh, loads of peeps joining us from all over the show this morning. Uh, Oldman Boerta, just from upstairs in the rocket room. Yeah, we also got Catherine um, and Steph. Oh, hello, Steph. I actually went, well, Steph's husband was one of my teachers in high school. So it's amazing to always yeah. see them Oh, online. Richie. Yep. Oh, they are in uh, Abu Dhabi. Somewhere there. They are overseas. They are yes. in the Middle East somewhere. <laughs> Louise Yonka, all the way in Da'ar, in the Northern Cape. Nice to have you joining us this morning. Oh, oh Nick Stone. Stone. Hello. They're we all went, the way in New Zealand. Oh, she's from New Zealand. Yes, and from the, the, the lovely Hannah Plenty. family is also online. Firm favourites. Lovely Hannahs. Hello, good morning. Yes, hello, Hannah fam. Nice to see you guys online. Stu, we need a catch-up. We haven't had one for a while. So we need to chat this week. I miss you and your family terribly, but... Uh, Yes. Choose my mate. Dubs, we have all these Easter eggs. Are we going to do something glorious with them? Yeah, we need to get some eggs them? away. We do. Yes. And Stu, the Sharks beat Edinburgh yesterday <laughs> at uh, the Shark Tank. That's great. I didn't watch it because we decided to paint our wall yesterday and took the TV down. A poor decision, but... <laughs> a poor decision, George. <laughs> but a yep. good decision. Good decision. At least this the wall's true. painted. This is true. Come on. Oh, Nikki Stone's reckons pretty in pink, George. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank George you. got dressed up for the pre-service show this morning. What a legend. Yeah, my George, I'm going to give you this egg. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's for you. Thank Bless you. you. The Happy dent- Easter. The dented egg. Because it matches your outfit. That's it. Come on. There we on. go. We also got some props over here. Look at this. A sleep <laughs> you mask. You can put the prop on. Wow. An Easter bunny sleep mask. Easter sport. bunnies oh. never look so good. Easter bunny is doing his thing. It's lovely. All right. Sean, are you going to give away some eggs in the ord? Yes. Yeah, would you like to? <laughs> I don't know if Dill's on standby in the auditorium or if you're going to be there. Is Dill got a mic? Maybe Dill can find out who is. Uh, <laughs> maybe find Dill. <laughs> That'll be a great. Hello, Lionel. Good morning. Hello, Teeks. Nice to Hello, see you. Hello, good morning. Good. Take them, Johnny. Take them and go and bless the people. <laughs> That's it. Like the expensive ones. James Fenter, he was a Come bit on. like the Holy Spirit yesterday, absolutely everywhere. <laughs> nice to see you, James. <laughs> All so over Dubs, the show. 
What is happening after the service at today, at both services? After, we're getting baptized, George. That's it. Well, not me and you, but yeah, we are no. doing baptisms <laughs> after the service this morning. I actually had some peeps messaging me, inquiring about baptisms this weekend. Super excited for baptisms. Yes, you do not have to sign up for baptisms. If you are in the service and you're feeling stirred at any point, right after the service, we're actually going to gather outside at the baptism pool near Wonderland. And again, if you are feeling stirred, we have t-shirts there, we have towels. Our prayer team is going to be there to pray with you and celebrate with you because it's such a special moment and decision. Yes, it is. And uh, I really do feel like we got little snippets of Dill's message earlier. Yes. I feel like this is going to stir faith in our hearts this morning to take a next step. So baptism could be an option for you. So yeah. can I ask you this this morning as we're leading into church? Prepare your hearts, get yeah. stirred. Uh, ask God if uh, the next step for you might be baptism. And uh, yeah. yeah, really, really lean into him this morning. So yeah. we, we are prepared for absolutely anything. Uh, yeah. When were you baptized? I was baptized in 2007. Wow. October. Oh, okay. I don't remember the year. I don't just know, know I was baptized in my youth pastor's swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It was so cold, but and such a memorable day. A really special moment, actually. We're in the Heenan Valley. Wow. In a river. Wow. Well, that's fancy. It looks a bit like the Jordan. Hello. So uh, it was a cool moment. Bridge and I got baptized with Phil and Tess. And, oh, wow. Uh, that's very cool. Yeah. Didn't and, know uh, that. I passed it time, Rob. It was a very cool moment, actually. Yes. The water was freezing. Nothing and like a shock back to life. And held me under for a few seconds. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make it's sure. It's for fun. Yeah. Just to make sure. George, they kept us going there. Uh, who else is online? Yes. Hello, the Schwartz fam. Good to see you guys. Uh, Kath and Joe are in the UAE as well. Come oh, on. There's Lisa from the Seychelles. Hello, no, Lisa. That's, that's Lisa Franson. Lisa Hansen. Hansen. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Also recruited friends and everyone's watching. Come on. That's amazing. Hey, nice if you're online, you why don't you take a moment to just share this live stream onto your social media platforms because you never know who it's going to reach. Yes. How do you share it on YouTube though, George? That's not my thing. Um, well, this looks a bit different, but there is a button that literally says share or it's got a little arrow that's kind of leaning towards something i don't know what if you hit that it's going to share to your or it's going to give you options on where to share the stream and yeah you never know who could pop online share the screen let this message reach as many people as possible yes. on easter sunday it is really really cool hey can we get some footage of jean in the auditorium handing out some eggs and if there's anyone from the eastern cape this morning in the auditorium Put your hand up and grab an egg from John. Oh, there's Dill. Morning, Dill. Hello, Dubsy. I was a little late because the worship team are getting fired up for a worship set this morning. So, hello, Link Church. Good to see you all. Um, Dubsy asked, is there anyone from the Eastern Cape? We want to just say hi to you from the Eastern Cape. Good morning, sir, ma'am, family. We have some Easter eggs coming your way. That's how we do things here at Link Church. We bless people with chocolate. Anybody from uh, Gauteng's too easy. Let's go, with, um, let's go with the Western Cape. Anyone from the Western Cape? Oh my goodness, Gerbs. There are some people from the Western Cape. Where are we talking? Cape Town, Somerset, Cape Town. You should move here. It's so much better here. Bless you guys and your families. Hey, also just to say hello to all our friends online as Dubsy is welcoming you from us, Tess and I. We want to say hi. Happy Easter or happy Resurrection Sunday. It is good to see you. Back over to you, Dubsy. Yes, here we are, George. Uh, tell us a little about summer camp highlights. What went down? A lot went down. Um, I actually have just gone blank now. But, oh, I do know, as it always is, it was amazing three days. Here are some photos. That was just as we arrived and we had our tribal wars. You can see the pump factor was extremely high. Hey, pump factor is up there. As was the sunburn. Has Kanye um, been in the gym? <laughs> Listen, the amount of stuff we were lifting, we all came back a bit stronger. That was the damn moments. No idea where that was, but it looks very festive. Probably on the field somewhere. Um, but yes, it was just so much, so fun and faithful. That was in one of our worship sessions. And to just see a room of 120 young people lifting their hands to Jesus is something that never gets old. And um, yeah, like there's some students here who've never come to youth before, but they heard about summer camp and they said, let's go. I want to be there. That's amazing. Yeah. These and are called FOMO photos. 
<laughs> that was where you had to bash your friend with an egg in there, like a, an egg was on their forehead. It was awesome. That was so wonderful. Um, yeah, that's also just fun. There's Liv, always full of faith and fun. Liv's up for it, eh? She is always up for it. Oh, lovely. That was amazing. They had to run to the top of this very slippery water slide and grab a balloon. It's called Job's Boil. Oh, that, you had to smear your, the students with, like, syrup and try and get flour to stick to them. But this kid... Look at that. Yeah, Bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> full of honey. <gasps> oh, guys. The syrup. Some students probably still have syrup in their hair. Yeah, there's Jean with one of the with a gentleman named Manny from the Circuit Riders team. They were with us. So fun. What a great group of people. Yeah, and overall, camp was just amazing. We're so thankful we got to go and so thankful for parents for entrusting us with their students or kids for three days. It's not a small thing to entrust 120 of them to a group of young adults. <laughs> no, you are mature now, George. You're not oh, a young gosh. adult. You're not an old adult. <gasps> no. Yeah. I'm not even 30. Oh, I nearly there. No. <laughs> Long way. <word>. Eight months. <laughs> <laughs> but just a shout out to you and John and the team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for taking out time. You don't have to do camps. No. But uh, you guys choose to because you know yes. how valuable it is for that next generation. Yes. So Amen. we're so grateful for you and John and the team uh, for taking out three days. Summer had her first summer camp. No, it's her second summer camp. It's her second one already. She's had more camps than oh. some of these students. Come on. Let's That's go. actually why it's called Summer Camp. Right? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> summer Ray. I'm on. Uh, well done to you guys, and thank you so much uh, you. for your investment in the next generation. All right. Oh, hello, the Yonach fam. Good to see you guys down in Koloro Mouth. Uh, the Mulder family are oh, in the bushveld up in the northwest, eh? A mm, little bit jealous. Uh, oh, the forests are online. Nutella. <laughs> Good Nutella. to see you, hello, Nutella. Nutella. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many great people. Oh, Nicky Stone again, popping up here. Oh, Nick's, uh, Nick's is all over the show. <laughs> and uh, Les, for all of the Forest family. Morning, guys. How's it, how's it? Morning. Good to see you. Wow. <laughs> oh, so good to be in church together. Hey, if you've just arrived and you're joining us for church this morning, great to have you with us. Can I ask a quick, one simple thing, please? If there's a seat between you and the yes. people next to you, wouldn't you mind moving up just a little bit for us, please, so that we can just make sure that there is space and some seats available. So if you could just uh, shift along yes. in oh, the seats. And Dubs, another important note, if you have checked your child into Kids Church, just a reminder that at any point, if your child needs you, our wonderful team are gonna pop you a message on your phone. So please don't have your phone on loud, but every now and then just take a glance at your phone because you never know if one of our leaders are trying to get a hold of you to come and get your child. Yes, yes, that is very important. Yes. Thank you. No, you're so welcome. See, Just George, that's why you are on. What happened there? <laughs> we timed out. Timed out. All right, that's why you're on pre service, George, because I don't remember that stuff. So, so good to Just have you remembering it today. Yep. Yeah, thank you. No, you're so welcome. Adding huge value on your first uh, pre service <laughs> show. My debut. <laughs> on your debut. That's amazing. Okay. All righty. Uh, what else we got here? That's all. Just that's a reminder about baptisms. Have yes. you got any young guns off camp getting baptized? I don't know per se. I do see a lot of our young gun students roaming around the building, but I think a lot of them might come to the 10 a.m. Yes. But you never know. You never come know. Come on. Yep. Calling all the young guns. Yes. If you're excited, we'd love to take a moment to baptize you this morning. Uh, it'll be a really special moment. So, yes. come on. Are we ready to go? So ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for church? I'm born ready. Church is still filling up day. like crazy. That's a, this is a, I love Easter. It's true. It's like happy chaos. It's like everyone's hustling for <laughs> chairs and making a plan. And yeah. That is awesome. All right. Yes. Hey, we're in for a great morning together. Thank you so much for joining us in church this morning. Thanks so much to every single person watching online and trust that a screen is not a barrier yes. for the Spirit of God to reach you on Easter morning. So uh, lean in, listen up. Uh, we're in for a great morning together. Get ready. It feels like God's going to like to match and He's going to speak into your heart. If you're joining us online, I believe God is going to meet you in your place as well. The gospel points to inner transformation. And when I follow Him, He's going to transform me into His glory day by day. Before you were a South African, you were a child of God in the person of Jesus. Can I preach? You are in Christ. That's your residence. today have the courage to give your heart to Jesus and make sure that the home for the next season of your life is the most stable thing that you've ever had.
And I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ in the presence of God. Well, come on, Lake Church. Jesus is alive. Amen. Are you ready to worship this morning? Come on. Let's sing praise Him. Praise Him who broke your shackles of clean. Praise Him who made your enemies flee. Praise Him who tore your walls on repeat. Praise Him, He saved to have been set free. Come, let's read it. Our God is so
It's Easter Sunday. Part of the noise, it's the sound of freedom. Part of the noise, it's the sound of freedom. We sing because He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the hinge of history. He's the one who changed everything. We were once dead, but now we're alive. We were once cast in, but now we've been cast into the story of God. Link Church, I don't know whether it may be an Easter Sunday, we can give one more shout of praise to the one who changed our lives forever. We worship you, Jesus. Yo, there's faith in the room this morning. And just as um, we set our eyes on Him again and remind ourselves of this incredible story, the good news of the gospel, that as we meet together, we don't just here on the North Coast, we meet with billions of people around the world as they celebrate the one that changed our life forever. And I'm reminded in moments like these when we get to worship that God changed our past. He's so powerfully here in our present and He's in our future too. And so just for a moment, we can rest in something that is so glorious and so beautiful, His story of redemption. It's Sunday and everything changed. Friday, it felt like death had won, but Sunday's coming and it's here this morning. And so as a family, I don't know where you're from or maybe you're out of town and you're joining us this morning and you're online, I'd love to take a moment to share communion with you. Uh, we're gonna do it together as a family. We call it this the miracle meal. You will see these just placed in front of your chair. We've got some around the front you'll hand out. I know the room is full. And if you haven't got one, you can put your hand up momentarily. We'll try and get it to you. This meal is an invitation for everyone here this morning. And just as you've got that in your hands right now, I wanna just remind you of this very simple promise that the tomb might be empty, but this meal carries incredible power. The, the tomb is empty, but in this meal is everything you ever needed because it represents something that, it, although it's physical, it has incredible spiritual power and inheritance. And this meal here reminds us of what Jesus did for us, that His blood gave us forgiveness and freedom. His body was bruised so that you and I could walk into blessing. We're not waiting for it, we can receive it this morning. If the tomb is empty, it means nothing is impossible. That means I can be healed this morning. That means my marriage can be restored this morning. That means my prodigal child can come home this morning. That means I can be reconciled to God this morning. The tomb is empty, but nothing's impossible. And so as you receive it this morning, as you peel back that layer, that first layer, we receive the body of Christ together. And so Father, I just prayed, as we do, receive it now. We thank you, Father, for your body. We thank you, Lord, for this simple physical meal but has a spiritual inheritance for us now and so father as your children we come before you and we ask we bring before you the needs of our hearts this morning lord easter sunday and remind us we take this meal that nothing is impossible with you and so we receive the body of christ and the blood of christ and we receive it by faith and so as we do father we can trust you with our needs and our requests. And we remind it again, God, that you're a good God and you love us. And in this meal, there's more than enough. And we receive it in Jesus' name, amen. Incredible spiritual promise for us as a family and uh, we can trust in his promise this morning too. I wanna to ask you just to turn to five people around you, give them a high five, to tell them welcome to church, welcome to Sunday. Tell them they're looking good. Easter Sunday, you're looking good. You can take a seat. Well, it's nice to see a full auditorium on Sunday morning and uh, just a warm welcome to, if you're part of the Link family, a warm welcome to you. I wanna say a warm welcome to those who are watching online. I think we have about 100 people watching online from around the world, which is amazing. Can we just welcome them? 
And uh, it's a joy to have you with us. There's no barrier to the screen, we've realized. And so we know God is with you in your homes. But uh, we're in a home here this morning on the North Coast. We call it the promised land. And uh, if you've arrived from out of town and your family have invited you here, it's a joy to have you with us here on the Easter weekend of the North Coast. The weather is showing off for you today. And uh, just to say, um, Link Church, I know there are many visitors here, but Link Church, can we just welcome our visitors? Let's give them a warm. Good to have you with us. And uh, we, we want to make the most of your Sunday and just, uh, we'd love to connect with you. One simple way to do it is we've got a card in front of your chair and has a QR code. You can connect with us online. But then uh, physically, we'd love to connect with you afterwards. We have a welcome lounge out the back end of our foyer as you go out. And we'd love to connect with you after the service. Uh, we, uh, we are pretty excited about the next couple of weeks coming up in the life of church. And maybe you're here and you're wanting to take a next step. Uh, in two weeks' time, we have a new series being launched at the book of Ephesians. And uh, it's going to be an incredible moment where we look at identity and who we are in God. And so I'd encourage you, you know, anytime we come under this word, it shapes our world. And I really believe over these next couple of weeks, it's going to do that. And uh, I know that today is a special Sunday because not only did Jesus rise from the dead, but yet again, wherever you might find yourself, whether you're far from Him or whether you know Him, we have a moment just to come under His promises and His truth. And just as I said earlier, I really believe that today, that God is going to do something significant in our hearts. We're going to encounter Him in a real way. Because when we listen to His Word, it's going to shape something inside our hearts. And so with that link, church, I'm going to ask you just to stand to your feet again. Because we want to take a moment to worship Him and turn our eyes on Him. Just as we ready ourselves to receive His Word today. So Father, I thank You for Your church. Father, I thank You for Your Word. I thank You for moments in worship where we turn our eyes on You. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so, Father, we thank you that where your presence is, there is a fullness of joy. And so this morning, we lean in with all our hearts, God. Speak to us, Lord, like you only, only do, Lord. We thank you, Father, for today, a moment we realize that you are alive and you're with us, with every single one of us. Come on, Link Church, let's worship him. time praise the father just the voices
And as those words echo and resound from this house, we pray them over the cities and nations around us. That the Father, that the Father of all creation, the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who would send his son to live a perfect life on our behalf, to pay a price that we deserve, to be raised again, seated at his right hand, that that Father, that our King Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit, that it would echo from these walls, that it would get into city streets, that it would find itself in stores this morning, in retail spaces this morning, this afternoon, in restaurants as we eat, around tables as we meet, that the King of kings and Lord of lords, you take your seat in society, Lord, you bless your church and I pray that you would take your seat as Lord and Savior and King in people's hearts here this morning people rattling around looking for stability take your seat the head of their tables Lord of their lives we bless you Jesus this Easter Sunday everybody said everybody said Amen. amen church Alrighty, you may take your seats. It's good to see you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We get to say it differently as the church, amen? Thank you, Slevy. I bet these eggs came out because there's some people who made a sacrifice to sit right up close to me this morning. So I'm just gonna bless you with some chocolate eggs. You were like fully committed. Like you literally showed up and the next thing you were like just committed to sitting on the floor. Like it was a service somewhere in the... And I just wanna bless you guys. Where are you from? Joburg, Cape Town, Belito, let's go. I wanna give every single one of you an egg. There we go. Pass those around. Just don't share them with the kids next to you because that'll be the end of my message. I just, um, before I jump in, just wanna say a special welcome and, and almost just a hearty welcome to friends and family who are alone this Easter. Um, perhaps you're sitting in the room because this is your family. And I just wanna say hi. I just wanna say like, that's the privilege of the local church. We're a family. And uh, if, you, if you're alone this Easter, perhaps you're online and it's just too scary to come stand in the church room or in the sanctuary. We just wanna say, God loves you. May he meet you, may he comfort you. May this Easter message get so deep into your spirit that you will know you're not alone. And so we just wanna say hi, if that's you, uh, you have a special place in our hearts today. I wanna read a little story. It's a story of a man who took a vacation to Israel with his wife and mother-in-law. And during that time in the Holy Land, his mother-in-law unexpectedly passed away. The following day, the husband met with the local undertaker to discuss the funeral plans. In cases like these, there are a couple of options to choose from, said the undertaker. You can ship your body back home for 5,000 American dollars, or you can bury her here in the Holy Land for just 150 American dollars. The man took a minute to think about it, then announced his decision, I'll take her home, thank you very much. The undertaker, intrigued by the decision, looked at the man and said, that is a very interesting choice. Can I ask why you would choose to pay $5,000 to take her back to America when she could be laid right here in the Holy Land to rest? Well, the man promptly replied, about 2,000 years ago, a man died and was buried here. Three days later, he rose from the dead. I can't afford to take that chance. <laughs> Shout out to the mother-in-laws. We actually love you so much. I don't know why you always end up here. Um, tap your neighbor and say, I can't afford to take that chance. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. Help me preach after that. Hey, the title of the message, if there is one, and it's so cool to have the young guys in the room, back from summer camp, some of the young guns. Today, we're gonna be baptizing people after our services, eight and 10, on Easter Sunday. What a significant moment to be baptized. And uh, I know we're gonna be baptizing some of the young guns, young people, teenagers, high school kids, high school adults that have just come back from a camp where Jesus really touched their lives. And so it's gonna be our privilege just to baptize people after the service. And, and perhaps you walked in here as a visitor and you leave here as family and family get baptized. And so maybe you kind of walked in going, I didn't come with that in mind, but somewhere in the service, God meets you, stirs you, gives you a nudge and suggests that today might just be the day, if you've never been baptized, today might be the day that you choose to be baptized as a believer. And so I'm just gonna put it out there. That could be you and, um, and I would, welcome that if that were you today. I want to read the story of Easter. It's John chapter 20. You kind of know it. The title of my message is, we know how the story ends. We know how the story ends. It gives us an unfair advantage. We get to sing the song in hindsight. 
We get to stand in this room knowing how the story ended. On Friday, I spoke a word around just a simple thought that his finishing line was our starting point. His finishing line is our starting point. Not just by the bar or because that's just how life works, but if by faith in him, we choose him as Lord and Savior, his finishing line, the Easter story, the cross is our starting point. It is done. We start on a clean slate. Amen. All right, let's read the story of the empty tomb. Are you ready for it? I've read it so many times, never gets old. Hopefully you hear something new today. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene, I could preach a whole message of how God decides to meet us while it's still dark. But I'm gonna keep moving. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved. I love the book of John. John refers to himself as the one who Jesus loved. Like, what a guy. He gets it, friends. You could read it like, Oh, why would he do that? Why would he say he's special? No, he's not, he's not comparing himself to anyone. He's just accepting how God sees him. The one who Jesus loved. By the way, you get to be a part of that story too. Maybe you've always told the story as like, here's a little old me, made it into the back, just snuck in, didn't deserve it, got a life that really doesn't mean I'm worthy of the church or the gospel story. I just snuck in. I'm not sure I'm the one Jesus loved. No, you are. Not because of your own doing, but because of the cross of Calvary. You see, John, when he said, behold, John the Baptist, behold, here comes the Lamb of God that takes the way of the sin of the world. He understood something was coming. He wanted more of it. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. And so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter the one who Jesus loved. Could preach a whole message. And when you know his love, you'll outrun things in this life that you never thought you could. But we keep moving. Peter reached the tomb and ran inside. The linen was lying there, but he did not go. And then Simon Peter was behind him, arrived and ran into the tomb, saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up, separate from the linen. Significant moments. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went inside. He is likely to you know, let us know he got there first. Anyway, John's got a whole lot of confidence going on. He saw and believed, yet they still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise. Verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was him. Woman. He said, by the way, representation of the first Adam who named Eve. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking that it was a gardener, she said, you see, we've got to be named by the second Adam. We've got to be called by the second Adam. We've got to find ourselves in the story, not limited to how it began, but just taken aback by the gospel of Jesus to where he comes and renames us. Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, the second Adam, Mary. Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, Mary, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father. And your father. Tap your neighbor and say, and your father. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Christianity, friends, has a destination. And it is not just you're good when you leave this earth. It's that we have a father now and then. We have an eternal father. I'm going to my father, Mary, And your father, Link Church. Beautiful moment. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news and said, I've seen the Lord. And she told them that she had seen these things and he had said these things to her. I want to to kind of pick up on this story today, this Easter, just before you tuck into some good old lamb. 
I'm doing a star rib today with my friends. You know what a star rib is, English people? It's a standing rib. I know. Shout out to my Afrikaans friends. I'm going to give it my best go. JD Moller, if you're watching online, I'm going to give it a go. A star rib. What you do is you make a beautiful coal fire. You push it to the side. And there's actually a special rack. You can buy a special rack from Builder's Warehouse. Can you believe the extents we've gone to to provide the perfect bride experience here in South Africa? You won't understand, friends online. It's something we are born with. Hele Vietni, wat ons Vietni. But I'm going to make a star rib. That lamb going to drip for three hours, friends. It's going to be so delicious. You're going to wish you were there. I dare you to try it. But before we go and eat and before we eat Easter eggs and before we kind of do all the ordinary things of the Easter story, I want to pick up on some parts of it that I believe are extraordinary. We often miss them. You know the story of them arriving to the empty tomb. I'll pick up on that just a little bit. You, you know the story of, of Jesus, he was crucified and you've heard it, even if you only know parts of it, but I wanna pick up on three things. I wanna pick up on the earthquake, I wanna pick up on the empty tomb, and then I wanna pick up on the encounter. And I wanna suggest that as I tell this story, perhaps through a different lens today, that you too would see the earthquake in the story, the empty tomb with new eyes, and by God's grace, you would have an encounter. Let's talk a little bit about the earthquake for just a moment. Many people read the Easter story, don't realize that there was an earthquake right in the middle of it all. If we return or turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter, where are we at? 27 verse 50. It says now, this is the crucifixion of Jesus. It says now, and Jesus, when he cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. This is his death. Verse 51 of Matthew 27. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The New King James Version says there was a great earthquake and the rocks split. Listen to this. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many people, holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they walked into the holy city and they appeared to many. You know, somewhere in the Easter story, Somewhere in the middle of we just attended church, somewhere in Jesus was crucified, he was put up on the cross for our sins, somewhere in the middle of that whole story, there was an earthquake. The earth shook and two things took place that we read about. One, the veil in the temple was torn in two, all right? That means we have access to what we never had access to before. I'll touch on that in just a moment. That's what happened, the first thing that happened. The second thing, and welcome to a crazy, beautiful Bible story moment. The graves of holy men and women that were sleeping or had passed away shook and were opened. And they came out. This is what the Bible story tells me. I got to believe it by faith. Amen. And they came out and they walked into the holy city and were seen by many. You know what that is? The testimony of resurrected life happening right there in the moment. An earthquake, friends is testimony of having full access to God. This happens in the Easter story. Perhaps you just arrived and you're thinking, I like Easter eggs. I know that when we crack them, it represents the open tomb. Beautiful. Jesus rose, open tomb. Beautiful. Eat the egg, celebrate the story. Let's go back to the earthquake. Before it all happened, the earth shook and he changed things. It was a new day. See, earthquakes speak of a shaking. Earthquakes speak of a, of, a, of a testing of the foundations. The Easter story, it shakes our foundations, it tests us. It, it, it asks of us, are you ready for a new day? Is, is your life, are you, are you steady? Are you, are you in? Is it sorted? Or are there a few things that as that earthquake is mentioned, it shakes and it, it asks you, is there not more for your life? Is there not more for your story? You know what I love about the church and Easter and every Sunday for that matter, and please, if you've just come for the first time and you're from the area, keep coming. This story gets better and better and better. It's not just an Easter story. It's an everyday story. And so when this happens, it like shakes our foundations to ask the question, could there be more for my life? Could that little niggle that I have in my spirit, anybody ever felt that? I remember feeling it. I remember being my fourth year at university, feeling this little niggle. Could there be more for life? 
I believe there is. And that earthquake, friends, shakes the foundation of the Jewish nation as they have to ask the question, why has the veil been torn? The veil separated the ordinary people from the presence of God and the veil was torn. And now ordinary people, do you identify like you and I, if you're struggling, have access to the presence of God. The Easter story, the earthquake story is that you and I, friends, have access to the presence of God. Not only is He risen, but He is calling us to return to resurrected life with Him. Tim Keller says so beautifully, the resurrection is not a stupendous magic trick. It's an invasion of heaven to earth. The resurrection was indeed a miraculous display of God's power, but we should not see it as a suspension, listen to this, of the natural order of the world. Rather, it was the beginning of the restoration of the natural order of the world, the world as God intended it to be. When that veil is torn, when the earth shakes, he welcomes in a new day. It's not just a better part of the same story, it's an entirely new one. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come, but sometimes the earth has to shake to move us to the moment where we choose him as our Lord, to move us to the moment where we recognize the Easter story is an invitation for us to literally step into a new day in our lives. Tim Keller goes on to say, the resurrection means that not merely that Christians have a hope for the future, listen to this, but they have a hope that comes from the future. The startling message of the Bible is that when Jesus rose, he brought the future kingdom of God into the present. The future comes forward. It's almost as if to suggest and I speak to the young guys. I believe your hearts sometimes see things that the rest of us struggle to. It's almost if it suggests that the supernatural life for a Christian, when you give your life to Jesus, is that whatever was a future promise is now a present reality. And that I have a future promise of a father. He is now my present reality. I, I walk with confidence. I have a future promise of healing and wholeness. I have a present reality of the cross of Jesus. The earthquake shakes and the veil that separated us from the presence of God in the future is gone so that the future comes to our present. It is a promise that is too good to be true. I'm not sure how you grew up in church, but I wanna tell you friends, God is not waiting for one day when to finish the work that he has started in your lives. It has begun at the cross and the invitation is, would you let it complete itself in you? Would you let God move you toward a life that believes that the future has come forward? Spiritual resurrection is living in heaven while still on earth. It's living with a mindset and a perspective of heaven while still on earth. It changes everything. The Easter story, the earthquake, helps me realize that I can walk around with a perspective that is eternal and sure and hopeful and pure and beautiful and whole. I can walk around with that perspective now, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the next meeting that goes poor, the relationship that doesn't work out, the child that's having a little moment with me. I can walk with a perspective, friends, that is the future of that story now. Am I preaching to anybody? You see, it's one thing for me to get excited and preach it, but some of you are struggling to believe that that's possible. That's why it's by faith. We believe by faith that the future has been brought near. There's a song by Kristen DeMarco. It says, have, have you heard the news? The veil was torn in two. And what you could not reach future, you're now able to. The earthquake. I wonder if we could just Remember that part of the Easter story, the earthquake. The future comes forward. The second part of the Easter story I wanna talk about is the empty tomb. Perhaps the one we know about, but let's consider a few thoughts while we're here together today. In John chapter 20, as I read just now, Mary arrives at an empty tomb. It's not new news to the story, and yet we still gotta ask ourselves, why is it that the pursuit of the empty tomb is such a strong one? Why is it that the pursuit of what they had been told would be empty is still what they go after. Can I, can I get personal for a moment? Why is it that 
even when we know he's no longer in the grave story, we keep returning to the grave moments. Can I say this? He's already redeemed what you keep returning to. The addiction, the poor decisions, the pursuit of glory on this earth for ourselves, that's grave stuff. He's already redeemed, set free, taken care of, removed from whatever got rid of. He, he's taken care of what you, already, what you keep returning to. So let's just talk about this empty tomb. It's amazing. In, in Revelation 3, God is speaking to the church in Philadelphia, and he's giving John a prophetic vision to the church in Philadelphia. He's, he's unpacking how he sees her, and he says, I've set before her an open door that no one can shut. As in, that's the picture of the tomb. All right? God wants us to see it again today. I took your sin into that tomb. I took your despair into that tomb. I took your brokenness into that tomb. I took your pain into that tomb. I took it, I'm just gonna keep moving and I'm gonna come sit down here and I'm gonna draw a little analogy for you. I took it into the tomb and it got dark. I took your mindset into that tomb. I took the, the rhythms of your thought process into that tomb. The decisions that are just, bringing decay to your life. I bore them in that tomb, didn't deserve them, but I took them in there with me. I took in the brokenness, I took in the pain. I took in a body that was beaten, a body that was, his body perfect, got beaten. I took your health, the lack of it, into that grave. I took it in and they shut the door and I was dead, gone and buried. It was taken care of, perfect sacrifice. And then they rolled away the stone. And we left it in the grave. And I ascended to the seat in heaven to rule and reign of the planet, perfect, secure, strong, healthy, whole. And the scriptures tell us that we in Christ now. Therefore, what we keep moving back to God is already taken care of. And today I wanna give you a perspective of that. I want you to, as I'm speaking, think to the things that are grave-like realities for your life today. And then, and then get a snapshot of the fact that he left them there, you should too, and it's time to come up to higher ground. There is a bigger future for his bride, his church. Graves represent death and darkness, sin and destruction, spaces and places we keep returning to only to be broken again. But Jesus is not in the grave. He's ascended to glory and we've been invited to ascend into glory with him. Today, someone in this room is gonna get set free. Someone in this room today is gonna to see that grave and that open door as a finished product in your life. It's gonna be like, it's like the light bulb moment. Something turns on. It's like you've been, you've been watching this thing, seeing this thing, you've read the story, you're piecing all the puzzles together and you, you keep returning to the things that break you. You keep returning to emptiness and darkness. Today, we're gonna to leave it behind and we're gonna leave that place and we're gonna step into the story of God, which is light and goodness and glory and wholeness and freedom and forgiveness. And you're gonna leave that grave behind. You're gonna leave it behind. The door is open, no one can shut. I love it how in one version of the Easter story, Mary is asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? And like there's a second part to this empty tomb thought. Why do we keep looking for the life of God in human agendas? Why do we, it's like God is saying, leave it in the grave, come on a journey, trust Jesus, believe in his story for your life. I asked my little boy yesterday, he was climbing a tree. I said to him, boy, what's tomorrow? He said, Easter Sunday, daddy. I said, yeah, what's it about? He said, Jesus dying. And I was like, oh, we better keep going here. And what else happens? He said, and then he comes alive again. I'm like, that's it, my little boy, that's, that, that, that's, that's awesome. And then I wanted to say, and do you realize what that means for you? because the story tells us that we come alive in Him. Do you know a child struggles to move past the subject of death? Such a big subject. They face it young with minds that have not developed fully to understand what happened when someone passed away and they can't shake it. Now you tell them the story of the gospel and they get stuck on the death narrative. It's, it's just human psyche. Let me tell you, some of us are still reading the gospel story like a six-year-old child. We're stuck on the death narrative. He's not dead, friends. He left it in the grave. He's alive. He's risen. He's seated at the right hand of God. He's taking care of all things. 
Someone say, this church is loud, it's noisy. I checked you at a rugby game when they scored just to try. They didn't even win the game. Just to try. Jesus has put victory on the board forever. Not for once, forever, for all. Tap your name and say, we know how the story ends. The last thing I wanna talk about is encounter. The encounter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. By the way, Mary Magdalene was the woman that Jesus had healed, we told, of seven demons. No doubt, she's most passionate about him. For those who have been forgiven much, love much. And I wanna tell you to someone in the room today, who feels like your life, as exciting as this Bible story is, it feels like you're so disqualified for it. Maybe you're just like Mary. Maybe you're some part like Mary in that there's a work God has to do in you that's so big that you're not sure he can. I wanna tell you, friends, Mary is testimony that God can do anything. He can do anything. And it's Mary that goes looking for Jesus. And I wanna tell you that you feel so disqualified. You'll be the one showing your family that's walked with Jesus for 20, 30 years, has almost become a bit familiar with the story. Your love for God as you let him touch your life today be the one that shines in your business, shines in your family, shines in your marriage. You'll be showing them the pursuit. So many of us have become so normal. Just another Sunday, high five somebody, go home. This is not another Sunday, friends. And Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and she saw the stone had been removed from the entrance, entrance so she came running. You know the story, verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside. And as she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb, saw two angels. The angel asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away. She said, I don't know where they've laid him. At this, she turned around. She saw Jesus standing there. It's interesting. She's been with Jesus for a long time. She can't recognize him. There's a transition taking place. She has known Jesus in physical presence And there's a transition taking place. When he says her name, she'll recognize him. Why? Because there's a transition. I know you, Jesus, and what you look like, but I'm gonna have to learn what you sound like. And somewhere in this gospel story, somewhere in this amazing gospel story of empty tombs and risen saviors and all these things is an earthquake and then an empty tomb and it leads to, and this is where I want you to find me now, an encounter Mary encounters the risen Lord before he goes back to his father, we're told. He pauses in the story to make it very personal. Very personal. Get really excited about the big things. Get really excited about the open heavens and empty graves and all the exciting stuff. But I wanna tell you one of the greatest gifts of the gospel, if not the greatest gift, is the gift of God himself. He comes close. And so here's Mary looking for something in this empty grave and she's going, I don't know what's going on. And she sees Jesus but doesn't recognize him. He calls her woman. And then he says her name, Mary, and she goes, Rabboni. And there's this personal encounter. And I said to our team today as we came to church, I said, this room's gonna be full. It always is, it's Easter. But what I'm hoping for is that People in the room, as full as, it feel, as full as it is, feel like they're the only one. Feel like they've walked into this place looking for something. And you find someone. The gospel is not a product. It's a person. You can't buy it off the shelf and hope that it works to make you stronger, age better. This is not an anti-aging formula, friends. Shout out 2024, it doesn't work. This is an eternal formula. I don't have to roll my age backwards. I have one that lasts forever. And some of you walked into this room today getting product after product after product after product after product. Even the Bible is a product and you're hoping it will produce something. Until you encounter Jesus, it won't produce anything. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Easter Sunday story is a story of a man named Jesus, walked a perfect life, paid the price, raised from life, and then invites us through him as the way to know our perfect Father in heaven. Friends, encounter is essential. 
And what I feel is going to happen in this room as we close today, and perhaps it's already happened, is that some of you already, your heart's beating, you're thinking things through, you're wondering what this means for your life. Let me tell you, don't worry about anyone else around you. Just let him come close as he did to Mary that day. Let him come close. Let him begin to speak into your life. Let him begin to show himself in your life. Maybe you say, Dill, that's impossible. That will never be my story. Watch God. Watch him come. Can I ask you a question? Some of you guys have been doing this church thing for a long time. What were you looking for when he came looking for you? You remember that day? I was looking for significance. I was looking for popularity. I, I, I was pursuing and he came in pursuit of me. Someone said, Dill, what changed your life that day? Encounter. A personal encounter with the person of Jesus. I couldn't deny his presence in that moment. I cannot deny his presence in my life. Every single day of my life, I got a little office up here in the church campus. I get you nice and early. Some of you guys know this. And I go and sit in this little chair in my office. And before I open my Bible and do my devotion and get through the next Bible app so all my friends can like and share and know that I'm doing great, I just sit down in that chair and I thank God for His presence in my life. Come Holy Spirit, come and touch me this morning. Come Holy Spirit, come fill me up. Come Holy Spirit, come and, come and shake the stuff that gets in the way of this encounter. And before I've opened my Bible, I've encountered the King. Some of you need to know that that's the invitation of Easter. Before Mary went and told a single disciple what was about to take place, she enjoyed a moment with Jesus. Stand with me, church. I'm going to ask that again. What were you looking for when he came looking for you? Well, let me ask it in this way. What are you looking for as he comes looking for you. Are you looking for comfort from the pain? He's coming looking for you. Encounter is coming to you. Are you looking for answers and the questions? He's coming looking for you. He will find you. The biggest question mark over your life will be absorbed by the presence of this King. The Easter story, friends. Yes, it's a story of resurrection but it's a story of very personal relationship. Maybe you're looking for purpose in today or hope for tomorrow. He will come now and he will find you. It's interesting, the Easter story ends. Jesus, Mary goes and she tells the disciples eventually. It's secondary to her encounter. Everything that we do for God is secondary to a moment with him. And she tells the disciples and Jesus shows up at the disciples in their presence. And it says, and he breathes on them, the Holy Spirit. He gives them an encounter too. And then he blesses them and he says, go into the world and share the gospel. But he breathes on them and he shows up with them first. And then he says, there's this man named Thomas. He says, Thomas doesn't agree with this whole gig. He said, I'll believe it's him because Thomas was out playing somebody. He wasn't with the disciples. He was distracted. And Thomas said, I'm not going to buy into any of this unless I can see his nail-scarred hands and I can feel the wound in his side. And Jesus shows up to Thomas and Thomas feels it. He says, blessed are you, Thomas, for you have believed what you've seen. And then he says something so powerful. He says, but more blessed are those who believe in what they have not seen. Today, we get to encounter this voice and make a decision to believe in what we can't always see but we know he's here and so father we just we honor the story it's yours and I want to thank you personally that you let John include that moment where Mary speaks to Jesus before she runs off to the next thing the earthquake, the empty tomb, and then the encounter. 
And Father, as we, as we worship you with words that tell the story in song, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, come into this room. Come upon the message of grace and the gospel of Jesus. And come into people's hearts that are wondering, that are searching, that are looking. I pray, God, that you'd go way beyond a friend's opinion, that you'd go way beyond the quote that they've read, that you'd go way beyond what their minds can comprehend, that you would encounter people in their darkness today, that you would encounter people in their wondering today, God, that you, Jesus, friend of sinners, Lord of truth, you meet with your people this Easter. Come on, let's sing in the morning. In the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath till the storm was moved That's for right. good for the Lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs. Earthquake. souls of all who come to the Father are restored. Encounter, let's sing. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I we close this morning, I was wondering if you could just bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. Sense God's presence with us and as Dil was speaking, uh, I believe that it's a morning where we take a pause moment. For many of us, as we've heard this message and we've heard the words of the gospel, we, we're probably asking the question, I came here looking for something, but I, my heart really cries out for someone. 
the good news of the gospel is that Jesus is here now. And one thing we look when we see Jesus, He did it for Mary, He can do it for us. He always gave people an opportunity to respond by faith. I might not see Him, but I can sense Him. I might not see Him, but I've heard His voice. I was looking for something else, but He came looking for me this morning. And if that's you today and your heart's been beating, you're saying, you know what, I want to know this God. I want to know Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to respond. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand in faith. All you're doing by raising your hand is saying, I surrender my heart to Him. I want to follow Him. But not just follow Him, know Him. Salvation is a gift from God. He opens our hearts. Heads bowed and eyes closed. A personal moment. It's a full room, but He came to speak to me today. count of three. One, God loves you. Two, He sent His Son to die for you. Three, He calls you to respond by faith. If that's you, just raise your hand and acknowledge it. Thank you. Thank you for your hands going up this morning, Father. Thank you for your hearts changing to you. Put your hands down for a moment. We're going to take a moment to pray a simple prayer together. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you will be saved. And so today, from the front to the back, we're gonna pray a simple prayer together with those who chose to choose to trust Him today an encounter with the risen King, changed forever because of what He did for us. Let's pray this simple prayer together with faith. Thank you, Jesus, that you did what I could never do. Thank you for meeting me this morning for an encounter with you I hear your voice would you fill my heart with your Holy Spirit in Jesus name we pray Amen and Amen come on church let's celebrate with those who give their lives to Jesus for the first time and uh, I just saw hands going up here for the first time I just wanted to say that um as you've prayed that prayer, I love how Dill said, the future comes into the present. As you pray that prayer, the Bible says the whole of heaven rejoices for sons and daughters that have came home. I remember praying this prayer many years ago. And can I just tell you that as you do that, trust Him with your future because He has an amazing future for you. He never promised it to be easy, but He always promised that He would be with us. When you say that prayer today, He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's how good He is. And if you did that today for the first time, can I encourage you? Tell someone today. Maybe it's around the table and you're having that lamb or that star and rib. I don't know what you're having. But wherever you're gonna eat today, tell someone. Because you'll be surprised. Jesus is at your dinner table tonight. He's with your family this, this, this morning. He's, he's in the streets. He's in the neighborhoods. He's in that place where you least expect Him. He shows up. That's how good He is. He's not just here in this room. He's online, he's around the world. And he's at your dinner table with your family forever and ever and ever, amen? I wanna encourage you this morning, maybe for some it's salvation, for others it's baptism. Baptism, what it is, it's an outward display of an inward belief. Let me say that again, it's an outward display. Of, you're gonna publicly declare to people, this is what I'm doing today, I'm gonna to choose to follow. That means today you can give your life to Jesus and today you can step into the waters of baptism. And the Bible says, as you go into the waters of baptism, wash clean, stand up as a new man in Christ forever. And if that's you, we wanna come encourage you. In fact, I'll encourage you all, let's get around the uh, swimming pool, the pool outside. And we're gonna celebrate with those who give their lives to Jesus and trust Him with baptism. Can I pray one more time? If you feel comfortable, won't you raise your hands for a moment? It's just a sign of surrender. Father, thank you. Thank you for your your word this morning, Lord. Thank you for your presence with us. We sense it right here. You're walking through the pews of this church. You're speaking. You're calling people. You're inviting us into a greater future. And thank you, Father, we need not fear for your spirit is with us. Spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you for lives that have been changed today, God. Restored and redeemed forever. Thank you for simple encounters that call us to more, Lord. Thank you for a brighter future of every person here, every family. Thank you that we stand, up over, stand under open heavens 
where your blessing pours down and fills our heart. So for Holy Spirit, fill every person with the power of your spirit. Thank you, Father, that we walk in forgiveness and freedom, holding your hand into a brighter future. And so today, Father, I pray your blessing, your name upon every person. In Jesus' name we pray. And a church that believed it together would say, amen and amen. Be blessed, church. We'll see you outside of the pool.